Look at those tulips. These are the purple lady tulips. Here too. And you know, I actually think that they are just as tall and just as big as they were last year. And probably at least 75% of them have come back. So I'm pretty happy with that. Over here on the shady side of the garden, we are actually getting some hosta action. These are the stained glass hostas. There's a bunch of hostas that kind of have this lime green color. And then um, when they mature a little bit more, like maybe you can see it on this one, they actually have, it's sort of like a darker green with a more lime green in the center, which is a nice foliage contrast kind of goes with the Japanese forest grass. And then I also have these. I don't know what kind of hostas those are. Because I bought them a very long time ago. But they're sort of like the very large blue variety. Bleeding heart still looking very beautiful. Once these tulips go by on the front walkway, um, hopefully my Lavender Phenomenal is going to take over. I just planted the lavender in the fall. I kind of rushed to get it in because I was hoping we'd get some really good growth out of it here in the springtime. And I don't know if you can see that, but the silvery bluish foliage is the old stuff and the brighter green popping out is the new stuff. Anyway, my idea is, or my hope was that Eventually the lavender would grow lush and spill out over this walkway and that when you'd walk through it, it would smell wonderful. But it's just going to take a little time for us to get to that vision. Which is, I guess, part of what being a gardener is. You plant things with an idea and a hope for the future and then you just wait for it to actually happen. these ladies mantles those have gotten a lot bigger they fill out that space and then they will have flowers and the andromeda bushes those were like the first things to bloom and they still have flowers also have tons of new growth Let's check on my spirea here. I was trimming it a little the other day and yep, look at that. Crazy aphids are everywhere on this plant. I usually don't do anything for aphids in the garden. I do try to control them in the greenhouse. Um, hopefully at some point we'll get ladybugs or something that will take care of them. That doesn't seem to be hurting the plant right now, but I'll keep an eye on it. As you can see, I have been deadheading the daffodils, but I need to come out and do it again. There are some, though, that are still looking pretty nice and finally my Japanese maple has completely leafed out so that's creating a nice backdrop and a nice screen for the house 
and foundation. And then this guy, I always get it wrong. I think it's a Weeping Norway Spruce. It's a very structural element in this part of the garden. It's evergreen and I think it's so cute um, how it grows. It, it grows very slowly. You can see the little light green of the new growth on it. I don't know, it kind of looks like tassel earrings to me. And way up against the house is a quick fire hydrangea. Everything's looking very green, filling out nicely. We've got a ton of growth on the peonies. Those are two different kind of peonies. I think you can kind of tell that based, by, based on the color, I believe. These three are the light pink. And then the back, those two, are a dark pink peony. One is Carl Rosenfeld, and the other one is a very popular one, but the name is escaping me at the moment. I just think it's so crazy. There was nothing here two weeks ago, and now We've got buds and a couple foot tall peonies. I ain't complaining. It's my bobo hydrangea, sedums. I think still nothing on my hardy hibiscus, but that's normal. Ooh, actually, do I see some? green might be a little bit of growth anyway it'll be a while till it actually gets foliage, foliage popping up and then it'll grow really fast like an inch a week and get to be several feet tall and bloom those big beautiful hibiscus flowers later in the summer um, which is nice. It fills out the space and the color goes really well with the Japanese maple um, But it is nice that it's like a little bit tucked back There's not this Hole that you see from the front because it's kind of on the side um, Because it does take so long To arrive I've Got my climbing rose the David Austin Generous gardener. And this one piece needs to get attached back up. But other than that, it's looking nice. A couple double tulips that we did get are. Well, those pink ones are looking okay. Some of the white ones are starting to go by. And I think I'm actually going to take those out um, because they did not perform as well in their second year. I found another double tulip that I want to plant here instead in Florit Farms tulip specialty tulip guide. I'll see. I'll have to see if I can get bulbs for it when they go on sale in the summer, end of summertime. But for now, at least there's a little something looking good here. Those are shrub roses behind. Um, they just get very full. And there'll be like hundreds of roses on them. It's so beautiful surrounding our bird bath. Behind that, behind the bird bath, this is a viburnum winterther. Um, 
has white flowers that will be coming out shortly here. And then the rest of this stuff is just kind of like a mess right now. I'm waiting a little bit. We'll see this uh, tulip foliage it just doesn't look good. These ones didn't have flowers. So this has got to get pulled out because it's just a mess right now. But I also need to come in and thin which I believe these are the poppy seedlings I threw down in the late winter. Um, so I need to thin those out. And then I still don't know. Some of these like tall little thingies are alliums I planted and some are weeds. So I guess I just need to get brave and pull some of those. I did, however, do some pinching this week. Specifically, I pinched back cat mints. And honestly, you can't even tell really that I did it. It maybe looks like a little bit less of a mound shape because I cut back about a third of the stems by a leaf or two and then maybe another third by like two or three leaves and then I left some of them full length just to get um, delayed blooming and kind of spread it out a little bit more otherwise they all bloom all the flowers bloom at exactly the same time and then they go by and then the plant just looks kind of straggly I did the same thing on this bees balm. Um, you can see one here. I don't know if you can see that, but this one here is one that I did not cut. It's just growing one single stalk. And then this one here is one that I did cut the top set of leaves off and as you can see now it's growing two little side stalks instead I also pinched pretty much pinched the whole thing on these golden jubilee amsonias I don't really grow those for the flowers although they do have pretty tall purple flowers that the bees love goldfinches love them too we always see goldfinches in our garden but I'm okay if those bloom all at the same time. I more so pinch these so that I can get a better shape. Otherwise they have a tendency to grow very tall and floppy. Um, whereas if you cut them back, they'll stay into more of a mound shape. Tons of new growth on these lavender phenomenals. You can see the dark green is new versus the light green. Still one little wild tulip sticking around. You can see all the foliage left over from the tulips. I leave those, it gets filled in. I mean, it looks a little messy right now, but all these perennials will fill in so much you won't even be able to see it as it dies back. But I do cut off the flowers and deadhead them in. I gotta come out and do it again because there's still a couple. And let's see what else. Ooh, got flowers on the dianthus. Lots of buds. Those are really pretty. And when I came out to pinch stuff back, I was going to do the salvias. And I did this one actually. But this other one back here already has blooms on it. So of course I didn't want to cut any of those off. That's a nice source of food for the bees. So we'll just let that one go wild and I'll deadhead after it blooms. This is a GM. And that makes me happy because it looks like the 
salvia, which is purple, and the GM, which is orange, are gonna bloom at the same time, which was the color combo that I was hoping for. But you just never know in your garden like the exact what the exact bloom times are be, gonna be, and if um, some of these combinations are gonna work out until you actually see it. So that's exciting. My new nine barks in the back are looking to be establishing nicely. And have some buds on them. As does the panther nine bark. I guess I completely forgot about this salvia over here. So I don't... Did I pinch this one? I don't know. But it does have flowers on it, so... Again, that is going to be right next to this crazy, loud, sun-kissed lime jam. We'll see how that combo looks. Although I'm mainly growing that for the foliage. Up here in the back, a lot of people always ask me about this shrub in the middle, which is a vitex bush. It, When it's in bloom, it's spectacular. It looks like a giant salvia. It has these tall purple spike flowers, and they're like a very, they're almost like a catmint color. They're purple, but they're bluish. They're very beautiful. Um, and I love it, but the only problem is it takes a long time to get going. You can see it's still looking pretty bare. Then we have the little area of geraniums here. And there's the beautiful espresso geranium. And then down on the end, these are a great plant. These are Amsonia hubrecti blue star. There's these like gorgeous, tall, structural, very interesting foliage. I definitely recommend that if you're looking to add some perennials to your garden. And then this is the new Kusa dogwood tree. It should have white flowers at, on it at some point soon. I do have some new additions to the cut flower garden, which you might have seen in the background. We pretty much finished all of the structure for the garden this past weekend, and we also finally finished the drip system. So we finally got the right hole punch for it. I know it doesn't look like much now, but there's an arch entry to the pathway on this side. And then here in the middle, there is a 12 foot long archway made of cattle panels. And that is going to be a squash tunnel. And if you look at my videos from the kitchen garden, the potager from last year, we had two smaller squash tunnels and they were just incredible. First of all, it's a great way to grow climbing crops because you have all this room for them to grow up and over. They don't take up so much room on the ground, but it's also an incredibly beautiful way to grow something. And they get good they get better airflow, so it's better for the plant, less disease, also up away from things that might eat them, like rabbits, 
and also easier to pick. So we decided to kind of put this centerpiece in the cut flower garden. And I'll be growing some. I know in the end I'm doing tromboncino squash. Usually winter squash are the ones that have tendrils and that climb. Zucchini um, and the su other summer squashes don't have tendrils. You can trellis them, but it takes a lot more work. So I mainly just do the uh, winter squash because it climbs on its own. So I think the tunnel is mostly going to be winter squash, but there's also maybe a personal size melon I'm going to try to grow up there as well. And then we've got the sweet peas, which are kind of taking their time, I would say, growing up this trellis. And then down in the corner, we put another little archway, which was a leftover piece from a cattle panel. I'm gonna grow something up there and hopefully find a little bench to put there and then we'll be able to sit here and have basically a wall hopefully a wall of flowers in front of us and then here on the far side are the espalier apple trees which are in bloom right now Looking majestic. And then here is my lilac. And I don't think I know which type of lilac this is, unfortunately. But it's a much darker, bigger flower. This one in our neighbor's yard, sort of like your standard purple lilac. So good, I wish you could smell that. I did make a small change to the herb area. I stained the herb staircase a dark gray color. You'll see why I did that in a second. And I think I like the terracotta color of most of my pots against the dark it really sets them off and I don't think there's anything new in here although I've been snipping herbs putting them in drinks and cooking and whatnot which only makes them grow more which is nice got the green stalks the lettuce green stalk and the strawberry green stalk It'll be so fun when we can just come out our back door and eat some delicious strawberries. There's the beautiful Kwanzaa cherry tree. It is still pretty, but flowers are looking a little brown and, as you can see, falling everywhere. It was beautiful for the two weeks or so that it was here. Now it looks like basic pink snow everywhere. But hopefully you can see what I did with the raised garden beds. I stained them a dark gray. Um, dark colors like gray and black are a great background to set off green plants. And I also thought it would coordinate with the greenhouse. So I'm pretty happy with that, how that came out. And here I can show you in my shed. This is the stain that I used from Gardener Supply. It is a food safe stain in graphite gray. And I have not planted anything new in the kitchen garden recently. It is almost time to plant. Mother's Day was two days ago and that's kind of the around the time when most people plant veggies and tender annuals around here. Although we've had nights, the last couple nights have been in the low 40s. So I was waiting until 
that those couple cold nights went by and I'll probably start planning some stuff out towards the end of the week or the weekend. I'm just hardening everything off at this point. Look at this asparagus. There is a spear of asparagus that is taller than me. It's hard to see everything with the pink everywhere. The peas are starting starting to finally grow up. This trellising I made for them out of bamboo canes and baling twine. Oh, I haven't shown this yet. These are my potato grow bags. These are golden globe potatoes that I got from the main potato lady. And they are growing like crazy. I just topped up the soil on them. Nothing was showing a couple days ago and now look, they've poked out again. Check out the greenhouse. I'll turn my fan off for a minute so you can hear me. Actually, it was pretty busy this weekend. I planted all, well, not all, but some of my peppers in these terracotta pots. And I'm going to try to grow them in the greenhouse this year. We'll get much more consistent heat in this early part of the season. And then I'll put the shade cloth up and, and the fan on in the summer. And I'm just hoping that they'll grow better in here. I also planted the grow bags with some eggplants and basil. I've got um, hanging baskets for the front porch planted and those will probably go up at some point this week. I've got random tomatoes. Basically everything's, all these trays of flowers and veg are going out to harden off every day. So I just kind of shove them wherever there's room. And I'm looking forward to finally planting out all of these dahlia tubers that are growing on in the pots because they're taking up a lot of room. I thought I had gotten all of everything I had ordered and then another two orders came in last week. I'm pretty sure I'm done now. Yeah, they're taking up a lot of room. I'm probably going to move the peppers and stuff over to this side once all the dahlias are gone. And I'm probably also going to take down this shelving. At least maybe one of them when I don't need it for seedlings anymore. Everything's looking pretty good. Look at all these um, husk cherries, peppers, and then this stuff I j just seeded. Those are squash. You can see once they come up, they grow like crazy. Most of those are gonna go out on this, the um, out on the new squash tunnel we built. Oh yeah, we're pretty chock full in here at this point. Hopefully, in the next week or so. We'll be emptying out a lot of this stuff. That's what's going on here. Thanks for watching and see you next week.